Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back! It's time for some new Pimax 8K and Pimax 5K Plus content here on Sweeviver. First off, I would like to say thank you so much for all your awesome feedback about my latest Pimax review and I'm very happy that you enjoyed it and if you still haven't seen it, I can truly recommend you to check it out. Also, a big thanks to all my Patreons and a special thanks to my official sponsors Commander Darklight and Art Armin. Today's video will be a short follow-up and the first one about the Pimax headsets among many other upcoming videos here on my channel and I have some great news for you today. We're going to talk about new performance improvements and rendering optimizations that has been applied into the latest Pimax software. The new update gives you a nice boost in VR games compared to the previous results I gave you in the review and besides that we also get a significant image quality improvement on lower Pi tool render quality values. The performance increments and render quality optimizations are of course related to both the 5K Plus and the 8K, but the biggest gain will be for the 8K here, I think. So let me start off from the beginning. A new P tool or Pi tool update has been released, version 10176, or let's call it version 76, where the previous version was 74. And this new version apparently has some big changes in the Pi tool rendering algorithm and especially how the games are being rendered to each headset depending on the Pi tool render quality value. Pimax as a company is of course completely quiet about how the changes are made without revealing too much information about the rendering pipeline and how it really works. So everything I say here are my own assumptions of course, but of course I will give you some facts here as well and also in-game proof with the real frame rates and statistics to really show you what I'm talking about. So I started off by installing the new update. The installation is automated through Ptool software and right after the setup is done, the headset starts up again. As you can see, the Pimax 5K Plus is now finally showing up as 5K Plus and not only 5K. But apart from that, no other changes has been made to the interface besides one previous option, lock posture, which has been removed now, which we probably don't need anyhow. Anyway, let's just keep the PyTool render quality value at the default 1.0 and head over to SteamVR. We can clearly see that the rendered resolution reported in SteamVR has been slightly adjusted for the 8K but also for the 5K+. What I immediately noticed is that the render makes a significantly better job scaling the 8K image into the SteamVR when using PyTool at only 1.0. Before this update, the image always felt a little bit blurry and also with the slight jagged edges using the 8K and you could easily spot that in the SteamVR dashboard and even in games. Now with PyTool 76 the image looks definitely more sharp. There is more definition into the image and I see much less jagged edges it's even, even if they still are there. The Pimax 8K image at PyTool 1.0 may probably never look as good as the Pimax 5K Plus in terms of clarity of course. But the difference now between the headsets at PyTool 1.0 is definitely less apparent. The image looks sharper now and while it may not be as crisp as when using PyTool 1.5 or higher, it's still a big improvement. In the few coming up tests, we're only going to use normal field of view mode in PyTool and we're going to try out three games, mainly Project Cars 2, but also Assetto Corsa and IL-2 Sturmovich. You may wonder why I'm using normal field of view of around 150 degrees instead of the large field of view of 170 degrees. Well, personally, I think we don't have enough GPU power to run most of the games in large field of view, especially the simulators that I'm gonna try out. Well, at least not until we see the NVIDIA RTX family, I guess. Also, before we begin the test, I also want to apologize for a typo error or a mistake I actually made in my review that I totally, totally missed. I'm sorry for this. During the benchmark test of the Project Cars 2, I actually told you that I was using large field of view, which was actually wrong. I was testing Project Cars 2 only with normal field of view, as this simulator is of course way too demanding to play on large field of view. It was really struggling at normal field of view already. With large field of view, the average frame rate was down between 40 and 55 frames per second and in the video I had between 60 and 75 frames per second. I hope you can forgive me for this guys and well I promise I will make up for that in a moment. 
First, let's check what resolutions we're actually rendering with using PyTool 1.0 on both headsets. With the Pimax 8K with normal field of view and the PyTool 1.0, we get a resolution of 2903 times 2557. And this is while using full 100% SteamVR render scale or super sampling. On the 5K Plus, on the other hand, we have actually a slightly higher resolution using PyTool 1.0 and SteamVR render scale at 100%. The resolution is 3081 times 2632. I think every PyTool software update we had in the past, the value has changed a little. So I'm not surprised we actually have slightly different values again. Uh, well, on the both headsets compared to what we had in PyTool 74 used in my review, for example. The resolution has actually slightly increased since PyTool 74, where the 5K Plus had a resolution of 2962 times 2632. This is just minor changes, and there might be some explanation for this, but I don't know how the render actually works, and I cannot answer why the resolution is changing so often between every PyTool update. Also, remember, I told you in the review that changing the SteamVR render scale from 100% to 50% didn't make any noticeable difference in terms of image quality unless you go below 30%, right? Well, let's forget about that now. Now it really makes a huge difference. With the Python 76, it really makes a difference. Changing the Steam VR render scale 100% to 50%, which previously gave a huge bump in frame rate, now unfortunately lowers the image quality significantly. It creates more jagged edges, more aliasing, and less sharp image overall, both on the 5K Plus and of course the 8K. This also means we cannot really fine tune the resolution as much as we could before. Going down to 80% won't make a noticeable difference, but once you go below 70% and lower, the more aliased image appears. So to really get the image quality improvements that are now added into PyTool rendering slider at 1.0 on both 5K Plus and especially the 8K, you will need to use at least 80% or preferably 100% in SteamVR render scale. If you want to go lower in resolution, it's actually better to just use PyTool render quality of 0.75 instead with full SteamVR render scale of 100%. Anyway, now all this may sound a little bit confusing but also disappointing as it makes it more difficult for us to fine tune the balance between image quality and performance, but wait, there is some good news here after all. Using PyTool at 1.0 together with SteamVR super sampling of 100%, Project Cars 2 actually looks really, really good now on the 8K and also on the 5K Plus, of course. The 5K Plus was not suffering that much before, but the 8K had big problems before to render the image without heavy aliasing and shimmering at distance. Now it looks perfectly fine. The image is sharper, there is much less aliasing on all sharp edges in the game, and you simply doesn't feel the low resolution anymore. Something has clearly improved with either the scaler or the render pipeline. And not only that, we can now run Project Cars 2 in almost fully stable 80 frames per second on the Pimax 8K with using a medium to low settings in-game, in-game super sampling of 2.0, which I actually maxed out for this test. I was using 1.2 or 1.4 in the review. And also now I'm using no anti-aliasing at all. I use normal field of view and PyTool at 1.0. I mean, this is great news. Of course, using PyTool at 1.5 will make the game even sharper and more crisp on both headsets, but still, the improvement here with PyTool 1.0 is really surprising. Well, you may think that this video that you're just watching has a lot of jagged edges and doesn't look that great, but hey, that's because I had to lower the recorded resolution in OBS Studio to not lose too much of performance by recording and playing this at the same time. Without recordings, I actually gain another 4 or 5 frames per second in all these tests. After all, I want to give you a real-time number and well, while running a GDX 1080 Ti and killing the GPU or the CPU with a high resolution recording would just give us false numbers and it would just decrease the frame rates in this example. In my review a few days ago, I was using the previous version of PyTool at 1.0, I was using SteamVR super sampling at 50% only, 
an in-game super sampling at 1.2 or 1.4 and I had low anti-aliasing on and we had a much lower frame rate between 60 and 75 frames per second mostly and remember during those tests we were also using normal field of view as I corrected before and we were also using a lower render resolution because the SteamVR super sampling was set to 50% only compared to 100% now that's almost double resolution Anyway, let's try out the Pimax 5K Plus now using the same settings, PyTool at 1.0, normal field of view and SteamVR super sampling at 100%. The frame rate is much better than a few days ago, but still constantly a bit lower than we just had with the 8K. And don't ask me why. Well, maybe it's because PyTool 1.0 uses a slightly higher resolution for the 5K Plus instead of the 8K, but anyhow, the difference is apparent, I think. It's more difficult to reach a stable 80 frames per second and we cannot get a stable 90 frames per second as the Pimax 5K Plus renders at max of course. The image quality is slightly better on the 5K Plus using PyTool 1.0 but that's mainly because of the extra clarity that the 5K Plus gives us well compared to the 8K thanks to the native resolution pipeline. But still, the difference is not big at all anymore in terms of image quality and I would personally say that the Project Cars 2 has fully acceptable image quality using PyTool at 1.0 as long as you have the in-game super sampling set to max at 2.0. This together with the great frame rate, especially on the 8K which mostly maxes out, makes Project Cars 2 now fully playable without stutters and judders. I would say this is quite remarkable that the PyTool software update can make such a huge difference and this also tells us what we can expect much further on in the improvements while coming up in new updates as well. This is fantastic, I'm so happy to be able to play Project Cars 2 finally without bothering about the frame rate while using the Pimax 8K at least. Trying out Project Cars 2 with PyTool at 1.5 makes it shine a little bit more of course but I would say that the frame rate suffers and I can't see that simulator fully playable with a frame rate of 60 or even lower. And yes the frame rate has also improved with PyTool 1.5 using the new update but not that much and definitely it's far from good. I guess that the RTX family might help out here, we'll see very soon. Furthermore, let's jump into Acero Corsa. You know already that this simulator is awesome on the Pimax headsets. I told you that in the review. And this simulator is actually not that GPU demanding either. Well, guess what? Now, if you have a GDX 1080 Ti, at least heavily overclocked as I have at 2 GHz, well, you can actually play Acero Corsa with normal field of view with PyTool 1.5 and maximum in-game settings including anti-aliasing in a stable 90 frames per second on Pimax 5K Plus and stable 80 frames per second on Pimax 8K. It will be almost silky smooth as well using large field of view and PyTool at 1.5 but I will cover more about large field of view later and not in this video. For this time let's just talk about normal field of view. A set of course that really shines no matter if you play it on PyTool 1.0 or 1.5 and with this new update I can assure you that even with a GDX 1070 you will be able to play this game with a stable 90 frames per second with max in-game settings and PyTool 1.0. And lastly, I'm gonna cover the benchmark of the IL-2 Sturmavik using the PyTool 1.0 on both Pimax 5K Plus and 8K. Before this update, this game really looked jaggy, aliased and also quite low resolution using PyTool 1.0. Well, that's not the case anymore. It looks way better now. It's not as crisp as using PyTool 1.5 of course, but it really is fully enjoyable and you can easily read all gauges, spot enemy airplanes from very far distance and now you won't see that much jugged edges at all. The Pimax 5K Plus takes the lead here once again I would say with the extra clarity, but I would say that the Pimax 8K looks really good here as well, despite only using PyTool at 1.0 and the image quality and resolution difference is now minimal between the headsets. Well of course the 8K has less screen door effect, but that's another story and I'm not gonna cover that now. Let's just concentrate on the rendered game image this time without 
comparing the screen door effect between the headsets. The 8K can almost run fully stable between 75 and 80 frames per second now, so almost maxed out. And remember, I'm losing some frames per second here because I'm recording this at the same time. Just like in the first example, with the 5K Plus, we get a slightly lower frames per second here again, but the simulator is more playable now than ever. And it looks great despite only using PyTool 1.0. And you may think that yes, last time we played IL-2 Sternomavik in large field of view, and yes we did, but remember we were only using SteamVR super sampling on 50% last time and not on 100% as we do now. So the rendered game resolution actually is much higher now than it was last time. Changing the Pi tool quality to 1.5 gives, gives us the extra sharpness of course, but the difference between 1.0 and 1.5 is not that big anymore and of course the frame rate is of course dropping a lot with anything higher than PyTool 1.0 anyway guys I think this is great news and here is the proof for you PyTool is improving the Pimax headsets are improving well this is only a new update but it clearly improves the balance between performance and image quality even with a GDX 1080 Ti we can now play some of the most demanding simulators with very good image quality and also almost perfect frame rate it simply shows that Pimax has the potential to improve things by only applying a small software update and I'm sure it can get even better now which it most likely will I guess now, I'm extremely excited about testing all games again with my upcoming RTX 2080 Ti, which should arrive any day now actually. I will let you know everything about the performance with both Pimax 5K and the 8K using the 2080 Ti in all possible scenarios, simulators, games and comparisons with the 1080 Ti in my upcoming videos here on Viber. So don't forget to subscribe now and you won't miss the best and the most in-depth Pimax 8K and Pimax 5K Plus content here on YouTube. So guys this is it for now, thank you so much for watching, please leave a like on this video and if you appreciate my work I'm doing with the Pimax headsets, please consider supporting me on Patreon, I would really really appreciate that. Lastly a big thanks to all my Patreons making all this possible and a very special thanks to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Dark Light and also Art Armin. I really really appreciate what you're doing to me and I promise I won't let you down. See you guys in the next one. Cheers!